Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and coming up right now, we're going to get into a mailbag. This is y'all's opportunity to ask me literally anything Raiders related. Ask me anything about my personal life. I don't care. I'm, a, I'm an open book here. So if you want, we do these during our live shows every single Tuesday. I did this Tuesday show a little bit earlier because of the Raiders roster cut news that came out. But we usually go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. It's just all the more reason to hit that subscribe button and make sure that notification bell is turned on because if it's not then well you might have missed it let's go to the first question coming in here from Weath. we got money for a sue and obj if you can't get an offensive tackle i don't see why not beef up the wide receiver room if you can improve you improve i'm, I'm a big believer in that however obj let's say cost 10 million dollars let's just say obj cost 10 million dollars i would rather use that 10 million dollars and allocate that to other positions of need because realistically I think our wide receivers are pretty damn good right now you got Hunter you got Devontae Keelan Cole Matt Collins and Tyron Johnson that's five good enough receivers to get us by now if OBJ is like man I really want to come to Las Vegas because he visits there all the time then we can have that conversation but the amount of money that it requires to get OBJ I'd rather invest that in my defensive tackle room, my edge rusher room, my linebacker group, my cornerback room, my offensive line group. So I get it, but we can use that money elsewhere in better, better areas. Hopefully that makes sense. Also, it's a hell of a fish. Let's go to Anthony Parks. So, like, when you park a car, you're like, this is my thing. Mitch, why is it taking the Raiders so long to fix their problems at right tackle and defense? They're patient. This is a team that does not do anything on rash decisions. They do not overreact. They would probably hate my overreaction Monday or Tuesday shows whenever I do them. But this is a team that's going to do their homework. This is a team that's going to make sure that their T's are crossed, that their I's are dotted. And when the Raiders believe that they need to make a move, they will end up making a move. We saw it in free agency. We've seen it this offseason. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. William Scott, you're next up here on the Raiders Report. <coughs> Tyron Johnson will be a starter, also White going to start. So you're saying Tyron Johnson's going to be a starter. I'm going to disagree with that. I think he might get some starting opportunities. However, if you were to ask me who ends up getting more catches, more targets at the end of the season between Matt Collins, Keelan Cole, and Tyron Johnson, I'm going to go with Keelan Cole because I believe he's just a better overall player oh Brandon Jasper came to party today and then in terms of Zamir White starting I disagree Josh Jacobs is going to get 13 to 16 touches a game he's going to be your main running back now Zamir's still going to get work but the way that the Raiders are going to view this season is you better work Josh because he's not going to be on the team next season and then that helps you keep Zamir White healthier throughout his career for the next three seasons and then once his contract is up Goodbye, Zamir White. This team will not pay running backs. It's not part of their regime. LI Raider 312. Here's a little to the boot fun. Wish I could do more, but it's a paycheck to paycheck kind of life. Hey, first off, do not ever apologize for super chatting on this show. I hate when people do it. It makes Jeremy and I feel really bad. The fact that one that you watch the show is the biggest thank you you can ever give me. I understand. Holy shit, Eugene. I understand that sometimes people leave paycheck to paycheck. When I first moved down to Dallas, Texas, real life, we were making barely any money, starting up a new show, and now all y'all super chats, they go to help us create more jobs for people and hire people like Jeremy Chuggs. Let's go to Rashissimo Lock. What up, bro? Like the live shows all the time now. Dude, the live shows, I'm telling y'all, I'm trying to get more live shows, and a lot of y'all are like, what do these super chats go for? If you noticed, I do a lot more live shows. Why? Because I get the pull with my bosses that they're like, hey, uh, Raider Nation likes to get down. Let's go party with them. So that's what you're seeing a lot more often. Let's go to Brandon Jasper of 50 Burger. Match me, Patrick B. Let's get the boot done. Well, we are getting really, really close to that boot from Brandon Jasper. So Brandon Jasper essentially came down the middle lane, threw it up, and Eugene was just like, bang, just threw it down, alley-oop. We are, oh man, 55 away from a chuggy boot. Let's go to Josh Gilchrist. Tay, I thought that said toe. Tay in an interview said, they are signing players based on intelligence more than skill because the playbook is super complex. I mean, there's no doubt the playbook is complex, and you, that shouldn't really surprise anyone, right? 
But the offensive playbook can be complex because when you have leaders like a Devontae Adams, when you have a leader like Derek Carr that even McDaniels has said that he's been able to pick up this playbook very quickly, you can teach some of those other players. That's also a reason why I've said multiple times that I think that's why they kept somebody like Jared Stidham over Nick Mullen. So when those practice squad reps, you have somebody out there who knows the offense a little bit more because that might be more valuable to have Stidham on the practice field that's more valuable than having Nick Mullins, the better backup quarterback, standing behind D.C. on the sidelines. Let's go to Perez. What up, dude? Mitch, Sue wants nine milli. You giving that to him? It's a good question. Um, I know there's a report out there that Ndamukong Sue is looking for about $9 million, and that one came from Deshaun Reed. The Raiders obviously have a need at defensive tackle. Sue has made it pretty damn obvious that he wants to be a part of the Raiders, or at least he's looking at the Raiders. She grew up a Raiders fan. How about this? You guys go down in the comments section right now. Would you give Sue $9 million a year? Use that money symbol for yes, or I want you to type T for too much. Personally for me, I do think that the Raiders need a defensive tackle. Let's start there. So yes, in that regard. However, I still do think though it's too much. If the Raiders can get him to come down a little bit, like I'd be more okay with the Raiders saying, hey, Ndamukong, I'll give you $6 million guaranteed. You can make up to $9 million. And if I'm Sue, I say, all right, I'll take that deal because if Sue's healthy, which he hasn't missed a game since 2012, and he hits certain benchmarks, like if he can get us five sacks, I'll pay him $9 million right now, no doubt about it. However, it is too much for him, but it is a big-time need for the silver and black. Let's go to the real Lil Ugly Dude. Don't say that about yourself. I watch you for a long time, and you're an inspiration for real. Well, I appreciate that. I think anytime somebody feels that Jeremy and I are an inspiration for chugging boots and talking Raiders, um, it's a very humbling thing. And I can remember the day that I wanted to start doing a podcast. I was living in Germany on my way to baseball practice. I was literally recording myself talk on a cell phone because I thought it was therapeutic. And now we run the number one Raiders show in the entire world, but. You know, it, I think it's inspirational, the fact that y'all tune in to watch this craziness all the time. I got that commitment to excellence because it's contagious because you guys have it as well. Let's go to Bryce B. Real one for life. If you're a real one for life, spam it down there in the comments. Let's go. Who's a real one out there? Jack Bishop, you're next up here on the Raiders Report. Is Puna Ford a bad trade idea? He's young. His Hawks are in rebound. Surely wouldn't cost a whole lot. This is another idea if Sue doesn't sign. I mean... I'll say this, you're not the first person to ask me about Puna Ford, and Puna Ford, as my computer just randomly turns off, is definitely a intriguing name, right? There, there's no doubt about it, and big time interior dude, we're talking about 5'11", 310 pounds. To me though, he's a pretty good player. When you look at his PFF grades, 73.0 overall, run defense is a 68.9, pass rush is a 70.8. The only reason why, I don't know if they do it, is because he's been one of the better players on that team. And yes, they are going in full rebuild mode, but they did just give him a brand new contract, I believe, or they gave him a raise or something like that last season. 53 tackles, two sacks last season. He's a really, really solid player. I like Puna Ford a lot. It's just when there's still other solid uh, uh, defensive tackles out there, it depends how much Seattle wants for him. Maybe, I mean, if Seattle's willing to give me Puna Ford for a fourth, yeah, I'll take that. All right, y'all, remember, you can also get our shows over on Rubble. Not only are we live right now on YouTube, we're actually also live on Rumble. And a lot of times, I drop videos on Rumble ad-free first before I do it on YouTube. I know, spoiler alert. But if you want to listen to them like a podcast, go to rumble.com slash Raiders Report. Give us a follow. I think you'll enjoy our content. Let's go to Alfaro951. What's up, Mitch? I chugged a beer for you. On the first preseason game on IG under Yo Adrian. All right, you know what's funny about that? I remember because I you I don't know if you answered the first time, but I remember yelling on that live, Yo Adrian, Yo Adrian. We gotta chug another one soon. Well, I'm gonna be doing a live watch party for Raiders Patriots. At the end of the day, man, if I tell y'all, hey, hit me up on IG, let's start chugging some beers. That's the opportunity to do it. But Alfaro nine five one. Uh, cheers to you, dude. Let's go to Jacob Holt. Would package Furl for the Pats offensive tackle also FAB? This is a 
always friendly FAB show. Let's not ever get that twisted. But I kind of agree with you. There was a report that came out yesterday, or I should say Monday, that multiple teams have shown interest in Patriots offensive tackle Isaiah Wynn. First round pick in the 2018 draft. The Raiders would have to pay him $10.4 million on his fifth-year option. And do I agree with that? Yes, I would do it because Tom Downey, our NFL draft expert here, said this is a guy that absolutely can play right tackle. So I hear that, and I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty good to me. On top of that, I kind of think that Isaiah Wynn is a really physical player, a young player that knows this regime really well. So personally, if I had to think of a trade to get this one going – Let's just hypothetically say it's Cleveland Furl and then a third round pick in 2023. The Raiders then get Isaiah Wynn. Now, what's funny is I knew somebody was going to ask me an Isaiah Wynn question on today's live show. So I told Jeremy, if I get one, make sure you go to this trade graphic. So shout out to, to Chucks for remembering to do that despite all these fireball shots. But this is the trade that I would offer them. Right now, I would say right now the biggest need for New England is probably on that front seven on the defensive side. Whether you want to line up Klee is an outside linebacker, as a defensive end, defensive tackle. Whatever they want to do, they can do that. For me personally, though, Cleveland Furl's contract is a negative. Jeremy, it's boot time. It is a negative, and I think ultimately that the Raiders win this deal. I would take it in a heartbeat, man. Spam those LVs. Let's go to Brandon Jasper. What up? I didn't start the boot meter, but I'll finish it. Real one for life. Brandon, it's not about who starts. It's about who finishes. And yes, fill me up a boot. Let's get it going. Jungle boot? Jo oh, man, not a jungle boot. What the hell is a jungle boot? That's beer plus liquor. Beer plus liquor? Yeah. All right, we're in the cut. That's true. Um, <laughs> thousand. Let's go. Uh, how's uh, Merrick looked this preseason? I thought he's looked pretty good, honestly, from top to bottom. I, I think he's going to be one of the best safeties in the NFL. His versatility is one of the reasons why I thought he should have been a first-round pick by a lot of NFL teams out there, but I was happy he fell to the Raiders. You know, he had this injury scare, a back issue that flared up at the NFL Combine. Mark my words, Trevon Merrick will be one of the best safeties in the NFL. The way that people talk about Jesse Bates, the way that people talk about some of these other safeties, y'all are going to be talking about Merrick in another year or two. Let's go to Zelsbo 69 Mitch, why do you think McDaniels hasn't made any moves yet? Thanks for all you do for the nation. Well, Zelsbo69, thanks for always watching the show. Personally, I think he's just doing his homework. He's patient. He knows that there, and in his mind, he truly believes that there's probably certain players that aren't either going to sign right away or that, hey, they have other options out there. And if they believe they have other options out there, that's fine. But I also know the Raiders are pretty confident in Jermaine Illuminor, and they believe that Jermaine Illuminor could potentially play right tackle. Let's go to Thomas Frazier. We're still in a cut, so hang on. Raiders! Raiders! What up, Thomas? Appreciate you. This was officially that one that got us to the beer boot. Now, the next one's coming in from Chris Caldwell66. Mitch, who do you hear showed out for us today versus the Patriots? Go Raiders. Who did you hear? All right. Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, Tyron Johnson were just straight cooking dudes like I'm talking 100 degree weather day burgers on the grill blast that shit up to high heat they were just cooking defense or defensive backs for New England heard Max Crosby had a hell of a day Jayon Brown had two interceptions one which was tipped by Divine Diablo just a really really solid practice day for the Raiders let's go to clash with Zeus what up Zeus it's destiny his last name is also a hole or a hotel in Las Vegas hang on a second who, whose last name is also a hotel in Las Vegas? Win. All right, all right, that's fair. I'm like, who? See, I like the whole just win, baby. I think that's really clever. And, again, I got I to gotta give a shout-out to Raiders Unlimited on Twitter and Instagram. But he was like, just win, baby. I saw the thumbnail. Really, really clever there, my dude. Let's go to the real little ugly dude. You made me start YouTube. Even the content is different. So you got a YouTube channel. Well, if you do a YouTube live show someday, can I can I be a can I be on that show? We'll do like a 30-minute interview. I'm actually going to be doing a show late Tuesday, so tonight with uh, Graphic Raider. If you guys are interested in watching that, because we're going to talk about the event. But uh, if you need a guest on your YouTube channel, as far as I'm concerned, if you super and watch on my show, the least I can do is pop on for y'all show. What up, Rich? 
Which UDFA or under the radar player makes the 53 man? It's a good question. If y'all would have asked me this a few days ago or a week ago, probably would have said either like Sam Webb or Darian Butler. Now my answer is going to change. I'm going to go with Luke, Luke Masterson, the UDFA out of Wake Forest. I said it a little bit yesterday on our show when we were talking about Kenyon Drake that I was told the Raiders, I know it's a different regime, want to try to use Luke Masterson the way that Gruden and that regime wanted to try to use Tanner Muse as like a safety linebacker hybrid. So for that reason, I'll say Luke Masterson. But I know there's a lot of hype around Butler. The only reason why I'll type my LM here is because Butler – Maybe the better run stopper. However, his he's a liability in coverage. In the last two preseason games, I want to say he's been targeted ten times and has given up ten catches for or nine targeted ten times, given up nine catches for almost a hundred yards. That's not what I'm looking for in the NFL. So for that reason, I'll spam LM. Let's go to one of the OGs, Juan Hernandez. Since the Donkeys released Joe Schobert, can we get him on a one year deal? You're the GOAT, Mitch. I'll say this. When a player that has the name value of Schobert gets released as quick as he did, I think it simply just means he's washed up and he's not any good anymore. Now, maybe you bring him in for a tryout. Maybe you sign him for a week and be like, hey, what did the Broncos do? And you just you use him, essentially. You use him to learn everything that you learned from that time in Denver. Once you feel like you've picked everything up, See you later, and you're out the door. Now, y'all, if you want to hang out with me this weekend, the way that you can do it, I'm going to be at the Week Zero Raider Nation 2022 kickoff party. If you want more information, the guy to hit up is Graphic Raider. You guys know him on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, at Graph916. But scan that QR code right there to get your information. I believe it's like $10 a ticket. But it's going to be the biggest Raiders party of the year. It's going to be a hell of a time. Violator will be there. Corrupt will be there. Warren Sapp. Other old Raiders players will be there. Also, two short like we got guys with over a million followers on ig performing so if you want to go to the week zero kickoff party scan that qr code it's going to be this saturday scan it there's also in another party after that but unfortunately i can't totally tell you guys 100 uh, percent about that now if i didn't get to y'all's question you can always remember hit me up on instagram you can hit me up on twitter i'm available at mitchell rents 365 but it's also more important not only to just slide in my dms it's also important to stay up to date on that Raiders news, Raiders rumors, because I'm posting stuff literally all the time on Twitter. I woke up this morning, took Chuck out at 5.30. My first tweet went off at like 5.45 a.m. So if you're an early riser like me, hey, stay in the know. If you want even more stuff, though, I post it on my Instagram story. You all know where to get me. I'm at MitchellRens365.